In this video, I will explain the logical fallacy called the appeal to tradition. I'll begin with the general form, explain why it is a mistake, and use some examples of people making this sort of mistake. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you will be able to spot and deal with this fallacy. The appeal to tradition is a logical fallacy that is very similar to the appeal to popularity and the appeal to authority. Examples of it can sometimes be a combination of these different fallacies. The appeal to tradition occurs when someone proposes a belief or action based on the fact that other people have believed or done this same thing for many years. The general form is X has been believed for a long time. Therefore, X is true. Or for an action, X has been done for a long time, therefore X is right. The conclusion here is fallacious, as the argument presented says nothing about the truth value of X. The fact that people have believed or done it for a long time does not make it true. This kind of argument plays on the idea that people would not do the wrong thing or believe something false repeatedly for so long. But people do make mistakes, and some mistakes continue to be made. Also, how long does it have to happen for before it becomes a tradition? And what exactly happens at this point that suddenly makes it true? It just doesn't follow. This fallacy might be combined with the appeal to popularity. For example, the first premise in the general form becomes, X has been believed by so many people for such a long time. Again, this reinforces the idea that it must be true because all these people wouldn't be wrong for so long. But of course, it is still fallacious. The fallacy can also be combined with the appeal to authority, in which case it might become this authority says X is true, and people have believed in this authority for so long, so X must be true. Reinforcing an authority with tradition might appear to make the argument stronger, but it is still fallacious. Now, I should also say that it is invalid to say the proposition is false. So in the general form, saying X is false just because it has been presented as a fallacy this would also be invalid. To evaluate X, we need evidence and better arguments. Let's look at some examples of people making this mistake. The first example concerns astrology, which, for those of you who are not aware, is the idea that the position of the planets somehow influences the everyday lives of humans. Followers of astrology might say, astrology has been around for centuries. As people have been following it for hundreds of years, it obviously works. This is fallacious. Whether it has existed for 10 years, 100 years, or 10,000 years, this has no bearing on its truth value. Why should it? At what point has it been long enough for you to think that it obviously works? The practice of slavery has been a long-held tradition in most of the world. In fact, it was around for much longer than astrology. If you replace the word astrology with slavery in this statement, do you get a good argument for continuing slavery? When our ancestors abolished slavery, did they make a mistake? No, because the argument is fallacious. It does not matter how long people have been practicing astrology. If we want to evaluate the principle that the positions of astronomical bodies influence the everyday lives of humans, then we need evidence, reason and good arguments. The fact that people have believed in this principle for so long is not relevant, and asserting that the principle is true just because people have followed it for so long, this, I'm afraid, is fallacious. The second example concerns brushing your teeth. Many people believe that they should clean their teeth at least once a day. In fact, people all over the world actually do this, usually first thing in the morning. If you were to look down at the earth from space, you would see a line of people brushing their teeth at around the same time. And this line slowly moves west, going around the earth once every 24 hours. 
An alien observing this might well wonder what a strange custom this is. When asked why we do this, a human might say, because I have always brushed my teeth every morning, as did my parents and grandparents, and they will likely pass on this tradition to their children too. But is this a good reason for brushing your teeth? No, the fact that you or your family have always done it does not necessarily make it right. As I said before, slavery was a common tradition all over the world. As for brushing your teeth, the invention and availability of a toothbrush and toothpaste, as well as educating people of its health benefits, would have been major factors in the creation of this toothbrush tradition. And as for why an individual brushes their teeth, well, there are better reasons than because I've always done it. Of course, it would also be a mistake to say that you should not brush your teeth just because the argument someone gave was fallacious. A bad argument does not determine the truth value of a proposition. So if you do want to determine whether or not you should brush your teeth, find a better argument than the fallacious appeal to tradition. When you see someone use this fallacy, avoid the temptation to assume that a long history will affect the truth value. Consider the proposition on its own. The fact that it has been believed or done for a long time is not relevant. And as always, politely point out the mistake they have made. Avoiding logical fallacies will make for better discussions. Well, that concludes the video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of this fallacy. And if not, well, there is a long-standing tradition on this channel of viewers subscribing and hitting the like button. So hit the like button and subscribe to this channel.